This week's video is a subject that so many of you have been asking about, and that is hair loss and how to treat it. I'm with Courtney today. You all know Courtney. She's been with me in numerous videos and a huge help in supporting just the videos themselves and the promotion of them, but also life makeover. So I love having you with me. Yeah. She's a friend. She's a compadre. <laughs> um, but you know, Courtney also suffered from hair loss and has a really interesting story. And I think all too often, you know, we think of hair loss later in life for women, mm -hmm. but it can happen early on. And so I wanted her to share her story. We're going to listen to you. Also, I've got Dr. Susan talking about the hormonal component. I've got Dr. Marjorie Nigro on the dermatology side. So we're really tackling hair loss and then how to style, how to treat yeah. all of that. You know, tell me about your story and, and what that was like for you. Yeah, um, so I've always had thinner, finer hair. Mm -hmm. I've never had the biggest, thickest head of hair, which I've always been wanting. Sure. Um, and, but I've not, I didn't really notice hair loss, right? It was mm -hmm. just finer and I didn't have as much as it. My ponytail wasn't as big as most people, whatever. Um, and then within the last few years, um, just started noticing more and more of like my scalp. You mm -hmm. could see it. It wasn't like huge bald patches everywhere, but it was mainly just in this crown area, which a lot of people, that's where it happens. And it's terrible because that's the part that you is see? seen. You know, if I had it back here, it'd be not a problem. Um, and it just progressively kind of kept getting worse and worse and um, had to learn all of these different styling techniques and how to use hair extensions and how to hide these different spots and um, kind of I crafted this great you know way of doing it and hiding it and so it just kind of reached a point um, actually the picture that I showed you um, mm -hmm. and we'll show all of you um, one day I did I just took a picture from the top because it just it seemed a little bit more thin than mm -hmm. like what I thought it was and so I just I took a picture I was mortified it was the first time you had seen from yes because who sees it from up here right Nobody. like no you don't especially yourself right like maybe if someone's taller than you were sitting down like other people will see you from that angle but you're never going to see yourself from the back or from the top or anything like that and so i took that picture oh I, I was like almost instantly in tears right like it's such a hard thing to go through and it's so you know when you just say your hair other people can think it's not serious but I think it's kind of like you don't know until you go through it. It's just hard. It can be easy. I think so much of beauty and femininity is tied into our hair. Yeah. And it's it's an expression of that, right? Mm -hmm. And so I know that's why a lot of women struggle with even cutting their hair. Yes. Because they feel that they're losing that part mm -hmm. of their femininity. Mm -hmm. And it's something that people with alopecia mm -hmm. go through because your hair is tied into your womanhood. Mm -hmm. It's something that... You know, women who suffer from disease or there's yes. hair loss, you know, that's a big, big, big part of the struggle. And it's just, it's such an important conversation to have. And, you know, your case is probably more unusual to have alopecia at such a young age. Sure. But for women over 45, 50, yeah. uh, they all start talking about mm -hmm. thinning hair mm -hmm. and hair loss. And Dr. Susan is joining us. She's going to talk about the hormonal impact on hair loss. So the most common cause would just be aging and hereditary changes. Just like men have male pattern baldness, and we all know what that looks like. Some mm -hmm. men get it, some men get less. Some families of women have what we call female pattern baldness, which luckily is also treatable. Mm -hmm. But we see just a receding hairline around the crown and also a widening of the center part is typical. And just a thinning all over. So you might find your ponytails getting a little bit thinner. Mm -hmm. So that patient's going to have a typical presentation and we'll address what we can do for that a little bit later, I'm sure. Yep. Another patient uh, might have bald patches, very different. That's called alopecia, which is completely different. Uh, that's an autoimmune condition in most cases and would be treated differently. So of course, that's going to look differently when she comes in. Yeah. And then a large category of patients have hormonal change, of course, in our age group as the underlying cause of their hair loss, thyroid issues, testosterone issues high or low, 
simply aging or any major hormone change can cause hair loss. So that would be the most common that we see. And you and I have talked about thyroid a lot before. Uh, very commonly, it's misdiagnosed or missed. And so um, if you feel like that might be the cause for you, it's critical that that's looked into in detail. And so many other things, you know, because our hair is often really the thermometer of how we're doing inside, just like mm -hmm. our skin. Sure. It can be one of the things that tells us how things are going. So if we're losing hair, something's not functioning optimally, and it could be nutritional, hormonal, infectious, immune, so many different things. So getting the patient's history, seeing where she is in her life, and then a physical exam is critical. But I think for your listeners, probably the uh, hormonal issues, and also those that just happen with aging are probably the most common. Of course, I've got to loop in Dr. Marjorie Nigro, my dermatologist. So now let's get into causes on that side and dermatological solutions. And this is a very interesting subject. And unfortunately, hair loss has become a huge part of my practice over the last two years. We always had cases coming in here and there. But since the beginning of the COVID pandemic two years ago, uh, the two factors that are really, really important for hair loss are stress and uh, your physical condition, your health situation. And both uh, situations were really shaken up with the COVID. So when a woman comes up with hair loss to my office, uh, this is an appointment that we have to really go deep into the situation that this person is going through physically, emotionally, uh, her hormonal. So it's a big evaluation. And uh, as a dermatologist, I can't do this alone. I start uh, the train going by asking all these questions. But uh, right off the bat, I can tell you, I will need the help of a primary care. Uh, sometimes I will need the help of an endocrinologist for hormone situations. Um, I will need uh, the help of a uh, um, nutritionist sometimes, and uh, sometimes therapist and stress relief and meditation and all of that. So we just have to evaluate what is going on with each individual person and then go from there. So my first approach is a hair analysis under the microscope, analyzing their health situation. Next step is going to be start on the vitamin, the fish oil, and the, uh, the Rogaine. I generally reevaluate these women after two, three months, because you will have really for you to notice something will be two to three months. So that's when I see them back and I explain to them, it takes a while for the hair forming inside the follicle to come out. So it is a little bit of time that you need uh, to wait. For the patients that under the microscope, I diagnose the bad form, the androgen form that is concerning, I recommend right away the treatment called the PRP or platelet rich plasma. This is an amazing breakthrough and it helped us tremendously with hair loss. So PRP is a treatment that has been used for over 20 years. The platelets are cells that we all have that we call the repair cells. So they started by doing those injections in the scalp. And uh, amazingly, it worked really well. The damaged roots, the roots that are made to shrivel up and die, those roots started coming back up again and producing normal hair like they did before. Uh, PRP has to be done in a cycle of three to four treatments, and then you re-evaluate after six months, and you continue, of course, the liquids and the creams and vitamins, that's going to continue. What did the doctor say? The doctor um, tested but like my blood levels and my hormone levels. Mm -hmm. um, they checked my thyroid. Um, that could be common as well. They did all of these tests, and everything came back normal. They even sent me for an ultrasound of my thyroid because all the blood tests came back normal. So they were like, oh, well, maybe this will show us something different. Everything came back normal, which I was happy because nothing was wrong with me. But then it's like it didn't give me an answer. Yeah. You know what I mean? So there was no answer there. And so I just kind of um, waited a little bit longer and then decided to go to the dermatologist. Showed her my hair. She was not... I don't want to say freaked out because that's kind of mean, but yes. she was surprised yes. with my age and how it looked and 
all of those different things. Um, she said it's a form of alopecia. Uh -huh. um, I think it was called andro alopecia, which is just essentially it's hereditary. Uh -huh. um, and my dad's side of the family all has thinner hair and on the thin side and all of that kind of stuff. So it makes sense if it's hereditary. Yeah. So she prescribed me medication and a topical um, and said it could take six months to a year mm -hmm. to see results, if even results may happen, right? Because it's not the same for everybody. Sure. Um, and I've been on it now, next month will be a year. Yeah. Um, and I've had really amazing results. Um, Can I ask what she put you on and what yeah, you're taking? Yeah, yes. Um, so she put me on a spironolactone. I have my, I brought my, my bottle with me. Right. <laughs> um, she put me on spironolactone, 100 milligram tablets, mm -hmm. um, and I have to take it twice a day. Okay. So I usually take one in the morning and one at night. Um, spirulactone, she said it's also good for your skin. So if you develop, you know, any, if you have acne or anything that you deal with with your skin, they say it's kind of a two for one. Yeah. Uh, and another drug you might've heard of, and most of us associate it with male baldness treatment, but it also works for women. And that's finasteride or Propecia. Mm -hmm. Long story, it works a little bit differently. It works on an enzyme that, uh, called 5-alpha uh, reductase, big long name, but basically it blocks the production of a ho hormone called dihydrotestosterone, which is a, not testosterone, but a metabolite of testosterone. Uh, so that's one of the causes of hair loss. Did um, she say how long you'd have to be on that? That is gonna be a forever thing. So really? this along with the topical, um, she told me that if I stop, it will reverse. I know for me personally, the pill is very affordable. Mm -hmm. um, I only paid $10 a month for it. Okay. So it's something reasonable that if you do have to be on it the rest of your life, um, and my, doable. yes, very doable. Yeah. Um, and then the topical is actually just um, women's Rogaine. Yes. Minoxidil is a, it works in various ways, but mostly by dilating the blood vessels that serve the follicles in our head. So it's been shown in studies to be very effective for either the type of hair loss that we see just with hereditary bad luck and aging mm -hmm. yep. monoxyl is very helpful and also for telogen effluvium so that that's a great treatment as well as we talked about biotin mm -hmm. checking irons critical checking thyroid not just you know we're not just prescribing medications to put a band-aid over but trying to find the cause and then trying to get it to go away as quickly as possible because i having been through it i know it's how emotional that can be. right and so you can this is the box that i have um I got this at Target, you can get it at Walmart, you can get it at HEB, you can get it anywhere you can. Um, this box was a three month um, supply right. and it's like $17, I think, 20 bucks at most, mm -hmm. something like that. Um, and it comes with three little bottles and this little topper. Okay, and you and just, how do you apply? Um, so you open it, there's a little like one milliliter on mm -hmm. there, so we just, um, fill it up to about the line ish. And then, I mean, I haven't done this today, so I'll do it real quick. Okay. <laughs> um, and then literally just, I just put it on my head and just, and you just follow right along your part line. Where um, you yeah, I usually, um, I'll try to get it in like different parts. Like sometimes I'll do it over here sometimes uh -huh. just so it kind of reaches everywhere. The biggest thing is just that it's going to just feel a little bit damp for a second because you just put it on your head. Um, so usually I, you know, I, if I'm getting ready, I'll do my makeup first and I'll let that dry while I'm doing my makeup. Mm -hmm. And then I'll do my hair after once it's dry and okay. good to go. You know, for a while you said you had to cover mm -hmm. and I guess you have to kind of fake it till you make it, yes. right? Yes. In order to get there, mm -hmm. you probably learned a lot of not only styling tricks, mm -hmm. but products yes. to really help thicken the hair mm -hmm. or at least make it look, look. thicker yes. right? until it got thicker. Mm -hmm. So show me some of your kind of tried and true formulations here. Okay. So okay. we'll take the hair out. Yeah, right. <laughs> um, so the first step is obviously washing your hair. Um, I've gone through a million shampoos and conditioners and everything to try to find a good one. Right. Um, so these have been my two favorites. Um, one is big, sexy hair. Oh yeah. Um, and then the other one is called Ren Pure Originals um, Biotin and Collagen. I've just found that these, because huh. the biggest thing when you have thinner hair is that you can't have it be weighed down mm -hmm. because if it's weighed down, then it looks more flat to your head. It looks like you have less hair. Yes. It's the whole nine. So it needs to be um, like even right now, like I 
would never would just wear my hair like this, right? We got we have to do I don't something know, it to it. Great to me. <laughs> <laughs> we have to do something with it. Okay. Um. So yeah, those would be the first two that I start with, and then when I get out of the shower, um. Oh, and another big point about the shower. Yes. Is that I don't use conditioner, ever. And some people like cringe when I say that. I, I couldn't do it because my hair is too dry and frizzy. Yeah. But I get it because it makes your hair look thicker. Yeah. And like, so without using, con when you do use conditioner, your hair is soft and silky yeah. and smooth. But on the flip side, it's it flat it. to your head. Yeah. It's this soft and silkiness that will eventually just be like greasiness, which yeah. also kind of like separates your hair a little mm -hmm. bit. That right. if you like cannot live without conditioner, yeah. it's to just condition your ends because then it won't be up here and yes. it won't be weighing down your head yep. or your hair. Right. <laughs> right. Um, and then when I get out of the shower, I put um, this Pantene volume and body mousse okay. in. Um, and that's just mainly to give it a little bit of texture. Mm -hmm. um, and so right. when your hair is wet out of the shower, I'll just put that on there. I typically just sleep with it on yeah. and it really helps with a, it does create the volume and body that you're looking for. Okay. But then when you're styling your hair, um, it helps it hold it, right? Mm -hmm. It gives it something to hold on to versus just like falling flat, yes. falling loose. So you can't get your curls to stay. Yeah. That'll kind of help keep them up. And then when it's wet, you can put this, um, it's the Garnier Frutis. Yeah. Um, it's called Root Amp. Okay. Um, and basically when your hair is wet. It, oh, it's a root spray. For yes. Wet. And you can just kind of put it on your roots. Okay. Um, and I've noticed that's probably one of the newer products that I've been using. Yep. Um, and I've noticed a, a pretty big difference. Yes. Root, root lifting products yes. are really, really great for mm -hmm. creating that volume. And it's yes. like you say, it, it allows that bend from the heat yes. to keep the bend. Mm -hmm. And so that's what you need to get that volume up at the crown or, or you know, wherever you're fitting, even um, in the front. So. Yes. Very cool. And I love yeah. the fact that all of this is drugstore. It is. It is. It's all very cheap. Yes. Um, very affordable. Okay. And then we get into doing our hair. Right. Um, so we're going to pause here. <laughs> here. I don't know if there's an available one over here. Let's. Okay. Um, now we're going to style extensions, curl the whole nine. Shebang. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. So these are my extensions. Okay. It's so really it just all the hair. Yes. Yeah. Where did you find these? Um, I think I got these at Sally Beauty. Yep. Um, you can get the, they're everywhere now, right. everywhere. Um, they are, I mean, you can pay good money. I think yes. these were probably like between a hundred and $200. Um, they feel they're real hair, right? Yes. 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 Real yeah. human hair. Um, which I would suggest because if yes. you're going to be washing them, curling them, using any type of heat and they'll just, they'll look nicer. <laughs> Great. Yes, um, okay. and they come in all different. Like this is just like a one clip yeah. one. I think you have like a three yes. clip. There's two clips. Um, so and you I can see they're already now. You curl. You put these in first, and then you curl all of it together. Your hair and this. So I do it the opposite. Oh, um, okay. I know people that do it like that. I right. think like imagine if you could take your hair off and just do it right in front of you. Wouldn't yes. that be a lot easier? A lot easier. <laughs> so that's why I just when they're out of my head, I right. curl them all because I'm like, how much easier to sit here and look at it and be like, you know, curl. Yes. versus like your hands are up and your hands are getting tired and it's a full head of hair to curl um so you could do it either way um i've never noticed a difference between like you know like blending it together your real hair and the fake hair yeah. um so i'm really just curling this i use a little wand okay. and voila wow, and they're already kind of curled because i had them curled before sure. but i usually like to freshen up the curls before okay we wear them again use a regular right. curling iron or if you like straight hair you could straighten them yeah. um i found that when you when i curl my hair i think i can get more volume and that kind of can hide mm -hmm. the the thinness or the scalp or you know what i mean there's i don't know if there's you know maybe there's just more going on right um, and with straight hair, it's typically flat to your head. Let them cool a little mm -hmm. bit like you would your real hair, right? Yep. Um, let them cool, set it to the side, and then just go on to the next one. Um, Are you putting any product in these to hold the curl? So the same exact products that I said I use on my 
real hair, uh -huh. I use on these. Okay. So I'll use the same shampoo um, to wash them. And then when they're done, I'll use the same mousse and put a little bit of mousse in them so the, yep. whole, the curl will hold. Um, the good things about the, the extensions is that you don't have to wash them mm -hmm. all the time. And when you do wash them, it's fairly easy. Do all clip-in extensions come the same length or do they come shorter or do you just get them that length and then put them in your hair and have your hairstylist maybe cut them. Yeah, so any any of those options. You can okay. get them shorter, they have longer ones, they have multiple colored ones, mm -hmm. um, anything you can look for. Um, I have, I've cut these myself um, yeah. and I've had even my hairdresser cut a few as well. Okay. Also, you know, if you invest in a really good brand, like I've had these for probably three or four years. Wow. Like a long time and they're like my tried and true and I just, I feel like yeah, I've like, broken them in, they, they feel like my hair. Yes. And so I feel like if I got like brand new ones, they yeah. would be a silky smooth. And I'm like, it just wouldn't. Wouldn't feel like. Yeah, hair. like and what I've been working with and all this kind of stuff. Do you know the of these? Um, I, I can look it up okay. and um, we can put it. it. Yes, let okay. me look it up. Cause like I said, I got them a few years ago and sure. I just haven't been able to look back. And now we have to curl our own head. Right. <laughs> so I usually just, um, and that's another good thing, again, if you have thin hair, because again, I've looked for all the positives with this because yeah. it's very easy and frustrating to think of all the negatives. So when you focus on the positives, it just, Life it makes it better. better. Yeah. And I've always said, and, and there would be times I'd be so frustrated or I'd be crying or mm. whatever. And I just I remember always telling my mom, like, you know, like, God gave me this for a reason because mm -hmm. he knew I could handle it. He knew I'd find a solution. He knew, you know what I mean? He's always like, I was the person because. Yeah. I could do I it. Do you know it what I mean? And now you're helping so many people. Yes. So yes, yes, go. yes. Um, so yeah, I just section my hair. And again, this, mm -hmm. now we look like we have a decent amount of hair on our head, but I yes. tell you a year ago, this was a completely different story. So I don't want anyone to be like, oh, she doesn't even have really that thin of hair because it's well, you're before terrible. Picture, yes, so yes, you yes, yes. Um, so yeah, I will spray a little bit of dry shampoo. I switch out my dry shampoos all the time. Right. I'm what always trying new ones. This is Hask. It's a mm -hmm. charcoal citrus um, purifying dry shampoo. Yeah, I like their stuff. Um, yes, yeah. and then also the tried and true, um, the Batiste dry shampoo. Batiste is amazing because they make them in dark color options. Ooh. So when you spray it on yes. your hair and it's typically like white, if you mm -hmm. have very dark hair, that yep. you have to spend a million years either rubbing, rubbing it, in, it in or it doesn't even go away. Yeah. Um, and this says beautiful brunette. So yeah, that's a brunette. Hair. And they even have a one darker than that that I typically use. I couldn't find it, so right. I just brought the brunette one. Okay. Um, but they have a bunch of different shades, which is so, so nice for yes. if you have dark hair. Yep. <laughs> um, so we'll take, here, we'll just take the Batiste okay. one and we'll spray it in this mirror over here. Is you that okay? <laughs> I'm like trying <laughs> blindly just using a curling yeah. iron on my hair. Sure. <laughs> see she's really this. a pro. <laughs> um, and then I just kind of take my fingers through it. Okay. I'll brush it out a little bit. Right. Oh wow, how nice to have someone. Oh Get my gosh. <laughs> Imagine, oh my goodness. <laughs> this is the time. Like this is a thickening hair lifter, the Not Your Mother's brand I love. Mm -hmm. Also their dry shampoo is great too. Yeah. Um, and it's literally for fine, thin hair. Okay. Volume, strengthens. I'll just like kind of go down here and just spray it just a little bit because this, just like the other one, is kind of like wet. Yeah. Okay. And, yeah. It's a, a one stream thing. Yeah. So I'll just spray just a little bit right. just to kind just of... Just to kind of get up by your... Yes. You're like an inch away from your scalp. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. And then, if you want, <laughs> I know these are a lot of products, but this is just really what I've, I've had to do right. for a while. I don't use as many now, but if you want that big voluminous mm -hmm. kind of look and you don't have the hair to do it, then this yep. is the way. Um, so this is a um, texturizing spray that, I love that Dominique one. gave me actually. Love, um, love she probably that. gave it to me like, I don't know, six, seven months ago at this yeah. point. And it's uh, by Helium. I think you use like their hairspray yeah, and things their, like yes, that. The yeah, texturizing yes. hairspray. I use it um, for humidity and yes. frizz. Yeah. Yes, and this is, you can use it pre and post style. Yeah. Yeah. which is great. Layer one, uh, dual purpose, body enhance, thermal buffer, blowout, curl scrunch. It's got sunscreen. That's one great thing I love about helium. 
so I'll just kind of throw that in there. You have to have these products and mm -hmm. the curl hold, right? And now we are going to just curl our real hair mm -hmm. just like we did um, the extensions. Yeah, so you just use a spiral iron and you leave out your ends. Yes, I leave yeah. out a little bit of the end um, curl. I know for some people, um, the wands just don't work for them. Yeah. I know some people struggle or they burn their hands. Yes, or oftentimes that you have to wear a glove. Glo with it. Yes. Yeah. Um, I've just found that that's what works best for me and it's like the simplest and the easiest and all mm -hmm. of that good stuff. But if you have a um, curling iron, I know some people like to curl their hair with their straightener. Yeah. Um, whatever. But I will say you save your ends by doing that. Yes. It's a really, really good thing. Oh, look at that. See, this and is, I think everyone needs is. a Dominique while they do their hair. <laughs> Uh, Do you have any particular way that you, you twist it or is it just... I, so I try to do it different ways yes. throughout to make it look a little bit more natural. Mm -hmm. But when I'm surround, all of the pieces surrounding my face, um, I do away Back. from the face. Mm -hmm. Doing good. We're getting there. We're yes. getting there. This would be the part and this mm -hmm. where I would see the most scalp, scalp so badly. And... So my solution to that um, is that they have these now sprays mm -hmm. that are supposed to be for um, a root touch up. Correct. So, you know, think Dominique's hair, if she was a natural blonde, she dyed her hair dark. <laughs> <laughs> she laughs. <laughs> Funny. <laughs> if she dyed, if she was a natural blonde and she dyed her hair dark, her roots would come in There's blonde. So many gifts and all this. <laughs> okay. This is dark spray. Okay. Okay. It's dark spray. <laughs> Up. Yes. It's um, great. And so you basically were like spray painting your scalp. Yes. Right? Which is why whenever I would dye my hair like black, yes. I would love because you know when you like you um, get your scalp, like when you dye your hair and sometimes your scalp gets dyed. Yes. I would love that. And everyone because would hate it, but I'm it. like, oh, it looks like I have a full head of hair. Right. And I loved it. I always wanted my scalp to be dyed. Yeah. Um, I even looked into that too. They have um, basically microblading like, yep, for your tattoo. head now. Um, so you can fill in your scalp, which that's a whole different, I have never tried that. Yep. But um, with this, you can just spray it on your head. Right. They just came out with this big one, thank God, because those little ones you, you go through out. so quickly. Yeah. Um, but I just kind of take it and I would go. So you're just hitting right up there. In yes, your and like right thing. where, yeah, where your scalp would show or if yes. you have more problems or whatever the case is. Um, and again, that doesn't affect your styling it dries pretty quickly right. um the only downside to this is that and it's going to be pretty intense right now because i just sprayed it but it it's not it will it will transfer <laughs> yes um i've never had it transfer like i've slept in with this on my i've never had it transfer onto a pillow or anything oh, okay. like that but your hands so when i'm done like my hands are going to be like black but you just wash them and it's okay but, but does it dry and stop transferring um it's gonna keep transferring to your hands. Really? Yes, so and I- Just don't touch your hair. Don't yes, your hair. Um, okay. yeah, like when you're out, yeah. to avoid it. Oh, see like right here, this is a good example mm -hmm. of like, that might be just like normal scalp, I don't know, but right. you take the spray. Oh, look at that, yep. See, that was a better example, yeah. and then it just kind of Just completely it. covered it Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so again, when you have those bigger spots, especially on the top, sure. it's so, so helpful. Yeah. So what you doing now? Um, do I'm, we... out of, I'm out of the line of fire. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thank you. <laughs> I am just spraying it. This Garnier Fructis um, hairspray has been like my tried and true. Okay. Um, especially it's anti-humidity, which oh, Texas. Oh my gosh, you have to have. Um, which yeah, bare, I mean, it works really good, but in Texas, it's really hard to even hold up. So my curls are in. We're gonna safe? shake them out. Yes, you're safe. <laughs> We're gonna shake out the curls. Okay. And then put the extensions in. Okay. So I don't know. Here she goes. <laughs> Okay, and then I also just realized, <laughs> yeah, like everywhere. I'm not kidding. <laughs> so now again, we're going to part. I typically like to leave out these pieces mm -hmm. because if your extensions get, if you, like you can clip it in yeah. and you can't get them back out and it's just, it's 
painful and doesn't look good. Okay, so now we're we're clipped. So okay. This can just stay out. I don't know if you can see it from the back. It's really mm -hmm. just half up, half yeah, down. So okay. um, you can go even a little bit more than halfway. Like I should probably grab maybe a little bit more. You mean lower? Yeah, go a okay. little bit lower. And I used to put them much higher. Okay. And then I actually was in a wedding and and you could see the clip at, Well, the person that did my hair, because I was like, I'll curl the hair and I'll curl the extensions and then you can do whatever you want with it. And I had the extensions in my hair and they were like, why are you putting these so high? Oh. And they were very, so I was like, so ever since then, I was like, all right, we'll go lower. Okay. So um, this is the three band one. Yes. So okay. I usually start with the, the biggest ones. Okay. So now that your curls have been sitting for a second, nope. Oh. <laughs> It'll get everywhere. <laughs> Your curls have been sitting for a second. I, you can either brush them out okay. or you can do what I just did and you can kind of shake them out and run your fingers run through them. Fingers through whatever. whatever you think kind of works better. So now we'll take this back. I don't know if I can, around. yeah. Um, and then we're just gonna clip and then, and then you, you clip it. it. Yep. yep. And then down. you, and you link it to a piece of hair, right? Uh -huh. And then clip, clip, clip. And you hear it snap? Yes. Yeah. It's these little clips and we're just, Snap. Snapping. Uh, yeah, I'm going to do a lot of layers because okay. we don't have a lot of hair, right? Okay. So, <laughs> so you it, have to, and you need to be able to cover them yes. with the hair on the top. So we're just going to keep layering so you have the amount of hair you need to actually cover, cover. them. Because if you do that, you're going to keep going up and up and up. And then you're going to have these little, the crown of your hair, which is mm -hmm. usually the thinnest, you're not going to be able to cover it up. Smart. Um, so you're just stacking. Stacking them up. Right. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Um, Do these irritate or bother you at all, or do you get used to them? You get pretty used to them. I would say if I'm putting them in at like 7 a.m. and yeah. not coming home until 9 p.m., it'll start just a little bit. But yeah. I also just have a sensitive head, so it might just be a personal thing. Yeah. Um, but I never sleep in them or anything like that, which is why I do think that there's an advantage of the clip-ins versus yeah. any other extension, because other ones are semi-permanent, mm -hmm. so you can't take them out at the end of the day. Yeah. But We'll keep going. Okay. <laughs> Just keep stacking. Yes. And again, there's tons of videos um, everywhere on different techniques for extensions. Sure. And you kind of just Figure develop your own. You. you know what I mean? Because I didn't see anybody stacking them like this. But again, I was like, well, I have thinner hair. So I can't be putting them in 20 different spots mm -hmm. because I don't have the hair to cover it up. This takes me pretty quick to do, um, but at first, no. <laughs> just trying to figure out, trying to you know do all these things. Um, another really good tip is that if you do need more volume, like you were saying, mm -hmm. you can clip these in upside down. Oh. So like instead of it laying flat like this, you could go like this and then lay it like this. Oh yeah. So you can and then like you said, it's like popping up. Yeah. Yes. Look I don't know if that. you can see. Yes, exactly. So, um, a bunch of different ways and we can even leave that one like that. It won't cool. really make up a difference. Um, so yeah. So now at this okay. point. You just basically decide what style you're going for that right. day. You can, like, again, I can put these all up and it would make a really cute curly pony and you right. wouldn't even, once this is down, you won't even see it. You could do a half up, half down. Mm -hmm. um, you can really style them because again, if you leave your hair down, then you have to worry about what's in here. So yeah. I typically go for even like that, like a half bun or a half pony or a ponytail yeah. or just some sort of, styling that's going to not show this part. Right. Your eye goes to all the fullness. Yes, exactly. Body, so you don't even see that this part's thinner than that. All you yes. see is just this. And so it's yeah, big. Yes. <laughs> yes, it's huge. So you can kind of play with right. it at this point. Some people don't want it to be this big. Sure, it will also fall throughout the day. Right. Um, but it's great to have the option. Yes, beyond. Or you can yeah. even like brush it out a little bit. Yeah, it's great. Um, Look at that. And you created that nice little bump Yes, up it's there. up there and it's all kind of, I can show it from the back because it's, yeah. it's pretty hidden with the hair and you don't see right. any of it and you look like you have this giant head of hair. Giant. Yeah, and then the good, great thing, like I said, it's real hair, so we're right. gonna hit it with some hairspray. Hair Keep it all together. Yeah, and even at this point, I'd maybe like recurl a few of these pieces or something if they right. fall in. Um, now we're at the point we don't even have like a part anymore. <laughs> uh, but it's, it's amazing. And yes. even just, you know, those little areas 
where you did that root texture. I, yeah, and now you I don't mean, see anything. Courtney, it's, it's ba-ba-boom. Yes, it's insane. It is insane. Insane. It's truly, like I said, life-changing, like yes. beyond life-changing. But you yeah. know what a blessing that you know, when you came in, just your natural hair and the way it I was. I know was beautiful thank you and you can go just like that i appreciate it because Which i know a year ago a year nobody ago. would ever ever even say that to me yeah. <laughs> um so yeah like i said it's it seems very surface level but if you deal with it you know exactly what i'm talking about yeah. that it's awful and so if you if you have thinning hair if you can't go to the doctors or you can't go to the dermatologist or no one's prescribing anything or no one, you know, maybe you can't afford it or, or whatever the case is that maybe there's, maybe there's not even a medical reason why, you know, yeah. or maybe the prescription is not working. And even if you do get a prescription, cause that was my thing when the doctor prescribed it to everything to me, I was like, Oh my gosh, a year. <laughs> wait, what am I going to do? Yes. In the yes. And now it seems like so quick, right? It's like, yeah. Oh, that was a year ago. Oh my gosh. So fast. But you know, when you're in it, you're like, still have to wait another year and I just have to go to the dermatologist every month and we would do a check-in and I'm like nothing's happening nothing's happening nothing's yeah. happening like and um I was considering PRP shots but I was ready to do anything yeah. anything even like a hair transplant hair mm -hmm. plugs like any I was like I don't care what it is I don't care how painful it is I don't want to deal with this anymore right. um and so this was kind of a last ditch, ditch effort before I did spend yes. the big money and the pain and I don't know what the upkeep even looks for like for those things. Um, but obviously taking a pill and putting a little topical on your head. And the topical is great because anybody can get it. It's yeah. over the counter. You can get it anywhere. Um, but yeah, it was definitely a journey. A, yes. A journey. A very big journey. But you know, it's sometimes through those journeys and challenges where we figure out our strength, our resilience, and our own little hacks to things. Yes. And that's <laughs> what makes, I think, YouTube a very special place is that it's this wonderful common ground yes. of people who yes. figured stuff out, mm -hmm. you know? And the whole point, I think, is to help people. And I think you've been an enormous help here with all of your products, you. your techniques, what you figured out, you being open about your journey. And I can't tell you how many people you're gonna help by oh, doing it. So. Thank you, that I makes me so happy. Well, thank you. You make me happy. <laughs> <laughs> I love you, uh, I love your hair. <laughs> thank you, like I said, I need some styling at this point. Oh, I'm no, crazy, you don't. but good. we're good. good. I am so happy to see that over the past five years, basically, uh, people are being told and are being encouraged to love their hair the way it is. You know, it's so important for us as women to accept ourselves and to love it and to honor it and to show ourselves and not try to be someone else. As soon as you try to change the aspect of your hair, uh, change the color too much, change, we are creating damage and we are creating a cycle that then you straighten, you have to keep straightening and you have to keep going. And then the hair is more and more damaged and then the fall. So now if you open Vogue magazine, you are going to see women with all sorts of thickness, of color, of curly hair, of big, wonderful hair. So just love yourself. I mean, just go for less trauma. Just be free from the norm of what hair should be. You should be you. That You shouldn't try to be anybody else. Oh, I, look at it. Aww. I think brown, black is in your future. It might be. And I think. will be good to go. Okay. <laughs> We'll see you next week. Thank you, Courtney. Yes, of course. <laughs> Enjoy. <Bye. your> <laughs>